Now premiering tonight for the Mardi Gras Film Festival, Something Like Summer will be screening at event cinemas on George Street. It's adapted from Jay Bell's successful young adult novel of the same name and it follows the tumultuous relationship between two young men named Tim and Ben, their romance and friendship, hardships into adult life. I'm joined in studio by two of the lead actors in the film, Darby Santos and Grant Davis, to chat some more. Guys, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sydney as well. Big flight from the States. Thank Thanks for you. joining. Thank us. You. I'd like to pretend that you're here just to talk to me, but that's not the case. Adam. No, I think it's I am this morning. Yeah, yeah, that's totally the case. Just for you. I wouldn't be anywhere at 8.40 in the morning otherwise. Yeah. And thank you for battling the, the jet lag as well, I'm sure. Now, of course. I've got to ask, what initially drew you guys to this project? Had you read the book before uh, approaching the screenplay? Um, I had a pretty cool experience when I came into the project. I... Uh, I had actually given up on my career as an actor and made the decision that I wanted to move in a different direction with my life. Um, and then this project just happened to come up and I had read the book. And uh, the, there was another gentleman who was playing the role before and he dropped out. So when I got the news that they were recasting, I jumped on it. And I wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> and here we are today in Australia. Amazing. Uh, the, uh, the day of the premiere. And it was... Um, yeah, it definitely set me back on track for what I want to do with my life. Meant so to be. My whole, my whole uh, future has kind of been based on, on this project. Amazing. If I recall correctly, uh, on the way from for the callback, you got into a little bit of a fender bender. Was it on the phone when they gave you the news and you were distracted? Yeah, and I, I, got, I definitely got in a car accident. They called me and they were like, hey, it was a callback. They were like, hey, we're giving you one more callback. And I was like, oh, sweet. Oh, no, no. <laughs> let me call you back. Let me let me talk. Yeah, it was. Uh, but yeah, that's a. Funny I was on story. the other side because I had already been cast. So at that point, they were like, "We need to bring Grant back." And then that whole fiasco happened. <laughs> like, this is a special event. I really hope he gets it because, I mean, that would be a good justification there were a lot for the of repair. Sacrifices that I made, including my car. Yeah, including uh, the backside of your car, from the sounds of things. Mm-hmm. Now, the film is is stunning. I watched it last night. It's absolutely a, a fantastic film. People are going to love it. How was this project different to, to ones that you'd worked on before? How did it kind of uh, change your, your perspective of, of approaching the film, I guess? I think there's always a fraternity when we all get... Uh, we, when we shoot on location. Mm. So in this case, we had a lot of the cast from Los Angeles as well as from well, Portland. Georgia. Yeah. And then and from Portland. And those were the ones that were actually uh, there. So we were all sort of housed together, you know, in this hotel. And then um, at that point, I had already read this, the, the book as well. So we were all kind of on the same page. And I guess when you work with the source material, it gives you this whole other kind of insight. And at this point, too, there were sequels involved and prequels and other perspectives. Oh, so it was like this whole world. And I, I think the, to answer your question, the, the main play was, are we going to be interpreting like the book or mm. do we want to interpret kind of like this sort of, well, the adaptation, you know, what the screen provides and where can we actually marry it and where can we land some Easter eggs? Mm. But it was engaging. It was immersive. It would be quite a challenge to, to approach it. Do we approach it from the perspective of honoring the book or do we honor the adaption? Mm-hmm. Do we go about it a whole different way and make something completely different? Because mm-hmm. it was, the book was quite uh, a phenomenon. It was quite right. a, a sensation. People really did love it. Was it... Uh, intimidating approaching something that was so intimidating (laughs) I play Tim yeah (laughs) nicely done man (laughs) Uh, no I I felt like if anything it gave uh, so much more of a reason well it gave a nice challenge because uh, for Tim uh, my character it's for he's such a like anti-hero sometimes Mm. you know like you want to support him but on the other hand he does these like things where you're like oh my gosh I don't know if I can back you up anymore (laughs) so I I was like my objective (laughs) is to make sure that everyone likes him no matter what because you know it's in the script what he does so now it's just a matter of interpretation to make sure he doesn't get thrown in the doghouse nine minutes into the movie (laughs) yeah I think I think that that's the same thing I went through is this where where do you draw the line between this amazing character that was written in the book and there was so being being the the playing the character that the book is based on and um kind of holding on to that position was especially for my first feature film it was Mm. this there was a lot of pressure coming in um but 
it was it was wonderful because we did have this built-in fan base that 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 came along with the book. So we have the fun little um, Team Jace versus Team uh, Tim, <laughs> and I'm wearing my Team Ben shirt. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if only you could see it. Yeah, we'll, we'll post a photo online, everyone, to SCR Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll make sure we pop it up there for you all. Now, I feel like uh, before we go any further, anyone out there listening who maybe hasn't engaged with the book, who doesn't know the storyline, could you give us a quick little recap about what the film is actually about? Sure. All right. Uh, it, the film is a fine. The film. I'll do it. <laughs> you, yeah. you want uh, take it away. I'll, take it away, right. sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pitch in later. All right. Very good. Very if good. If I don't like anything you stop say, stop me if I get it wrong. <laughs> stop me if I start slipping into the book instead of the film. All right. Well, Power Rangers. When no. you start, the, that's a different thing. That's a different story. Very, oh yeah. It's like so they start out in outer space. <laughs> no. Wait a second. No. I yeah. got my gold suit. And yeah. Then, yeah and then exactly. We go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Left that in the car. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's uh, it's a really it's a story about. Well, art, identity, and sexuality, really, uh, at that the crux of, of high school when it's all sort of blowing up. And so it feels like in Ben's story, he's coming of age and, and sort of learning to also be the artist that he actually is. And he sort of covets, uh, like, one of the jocks at school and the, the guys who are completely sort of, like, out of his league, right? But and then at the same time, Tim, who also has his own book <laughs> from the same story from the other perspective, which was the side that I read, um, is struggling with his sexuality, trying to honor his parents, trying to uh, be everything that his friends esteem him to be. So when he sort of faces Ben and uh, this access to sort of the truth that's inside of him, he sort of has to make this deal, you know, that um, I feel like a lot of us have to confront anyway when we're trying to choose mm. what we want to do versus something that's expected of us. Mm. Uh, but the real issue of the and the difference between this and any sort of coming out story or first love story is uh, Tim just to start the premise, Tim errs terribly and sort of rejects Ben. And it isn't until years later that he kind of meets him again. And at this point, you know, he's in college, he's cool with it, he's he's already more in himself, but now Ben is already going out with sort of the love of his life. And for Tim, Ben is the love of his life. So now that we have this, well, this love triangle, and any now anything is up for, for grabs as to what's going to happen and what Tim is going yeah. to be up to. I, I think the, the point that you kind of touched on was the fact that it is a universal story that... Um, I think talking to the director, I got really close with the director, and when we discussed the premise that uh, while it was based on a world of men being attracted to men, and that was that was a big part of the premise, we really tried to create a piece that everyone can identify with, mm. um, that these stories um, are, are versatile in the way that you look at them can be seen from a lot of different per perspectives. Um, and I think that we, we handled that very well, and I hope that that can be represented. It is such a universal story. It's a story that touches on, on bullying and betrayal and love and lust and all those things that everyone experiences, not only in their lives, but especially as teenagers, <laughs> as we see in the film. Uh, the, those high school years were terrible for everyone. I, think. Right. I don't think anyone right. had a good yeah. high school experience. No matter where you were. No in that matter high, yeah. absolutely where you were, where you went to school, where you sat in the hierarchy, who mm -hmm. you were, yeah. who you were friends with, everyone. It's just an awkward time for everyone. Yeah. Some of us are still like... Correct. Recovering. Still recovering. It's going to take some we'll time. I still dream we'll of those there. hallways. <laughs> oh, God, nightmares, cold sweats. But uh, it is such a, a beautiful universal theme that does touch on uh, through the film. Now, the film's producer have uh, said that the movie offers us all a chance to make peace with our pasts and, and possibly find our own true love. Is that something you guys experienced while filming, while portraying these characters? That's what I love the most about the, the screenplay, actually, was that we don't, um, and uh, on that note of, well, and that's life, <laughs> you know, here's a realistic depiction about things not Don't working away out. away the ending, Dobby. Uh, I well, did get, even though... I did get 30 minutes from the ending, Yes. So. Oh, okay, great. Well, there's still, <laughs> I mean, away for her. there's still, no, there, I mean, there's the possibility of a sequel and things aren't very clean, so, and there's room to, for both directions. Breathe. To breathe. There you go. Okay, good. <laughs> so, yes, but what I do like about, I think, the underlining message is that there, it's, it's one of hope and, and one of second chances and third chances and perseverance. Um, and sometimes the worst kinds of misfortunes, there can be something beautiful that comes out of it if we just push and get to that point, mm. you know, and hold on and endure. So that's... Well, it's in, yeah, what was lovely about playing Ben is he learns all of these um, lessons through the experiences with love, with men. And um, 
I think that that's that's something that we all understand subconsciously, but it really brings it to the forefront that love really does teach us these grander lessons in life. Um, and that was what, that was something I was trying to tap into the entire time is that Ben not only was growing as um, through his love life, but through um, through his experiences. And uh, yeah, it was lovely to to step into that kind of um, world in which you lose your train of thought like I'm doing right now. <laughs> well, double identity yep. is not just uh, about, well, sexuality. I mean, it is identity, you know? And mm. both Ben and Tim are also these artists that mm. sort of can't deal with the public seeing them for their art. And I feel like so many of us, I feel like everyone, every single person is an artist inside, you know, in some way or another. But sometimes we get so committed with life and mm. our work and our routines and patterns that we can't really dig into that part of our expression. And sometimes when we do have that glimpse of, oh, my gosh, I can do this. It's oh, but the moment someone else sees it, they'll realize that I'm actually not. Then I won't have it for myself, you know. So it's really wonderful to see them not only come into terms with each other, but also with themselves. And I feel like that sometimes is a, a grand message that only when we realize ourselves can we really open up our opportunities for connection with the other. Mm -hmm. Now, wow, that was just incredible, blew my mind because it is so <laughs> it's so true to the film and, and it is such a beautiful message and it is such, as I was saying before, a universal theme. Now, before we wrap up, guys, before I let you get out of here and maybe go get some more sleep, <laughs> go and, uh, I'll and go for a long black. <laughs> um, you guys are here for Mardi Gras Film Festival. Yeah. Mardi Gras is such a huge, fantastic part of Sydney culture. Are you going to do anything while you're here? We've got the premiere tonight. Uh, what are we looking forward to while visiting Sydney? Arts, culture, <laughs> uh, mountains, hillsides, um, fishing at the harbour. No, no. I'm not go <laughs> Don't fish in the harbour. No, There's no, nothing no, no. good there. Don't I do won't, it. I won't. Maybe 100 years ago. <laughs> um, yeah. And for Mardi Gras, I mean, it's amazing to see all the flags and all the excitement, you know, everywhere. And originally I was like, hmm, a float. <laughs> but I think having a nice little distance away and enjoying the parade will be, I think, much more immersive. Something like summer float. I'm a down. Something like summer float. I'm down if you're down. Let's yeah. do it. It's time. It's time. There's time. We can make it happen. All right. with you're going to join us? We're, we're going to go because we've got too much planning to do, guys. Thank you so much for joining us Thank this you. morning. Really Thank appreciate it. Thank you for having it. us.